What is up? It is Wednesday night and today I actually took off from work. So today was a nice, relaxing, independent day in which I remained quite present and just really truthfully had a fantastic day. Uh, my reasoning for taking off today was I went to Asheville to get my next tattoo. And that is the third tattoo I've gotten in pretty much about two months. So things are going very well from that front. And what I really wanted to talk about is kind of that whole process and what I feel about it and what it's shown me and how I've connected that to various lessons in my life. So I'm a huge proponent. It is something that I waited way too long to do, in my opinion. Um, I would say that a little bit of a little bubble of fear kind of really kept me from doing it for years and years and placing way too much importance in a sense on what it was I was going to get or maybe being confused about the things that mattered most to me and how to portray them. And some some way in the past couple months, I think that especially in the last 2 years it's been something I've been thinking about a lot really put a lot of ideas down and ultimately it came time to jump and so about two months ago actually probably about three months ago i went up to Asheville and met with an artist and went over my idea and scheduled the session and three four weeks later I had my first tattoo and it was it was a really enjoyable experience i think i have a really great artist um he's done fantastic work i suppose if I can, showing off the moose is the first step with the cat being the second and now the wolf on the inside. So he's done a fantastic job. Um, it definitely does hurt, but maybe more, maybe more than you think, maybe less than you think. I think that the ultimate thing, one of the lessons that I learned from that is Discomfort, discomfort can be worth it, right? And on the other side of that discomfort is something that you can really truthfully enjoy and appreciate. Uh, it's been a really weird experience for going through the world for 36 years and not having anything like that on me. Now you pass by the mirror or you get a glimpse of it now that they're peeking out from my sleeve. It's just nice, it's cool. It's a representation of stuff that matters to me. And it's a representation of myself. And so on the other side of that discomfort was embracing more of me and becoming comfortable with the things that truly matter to me and displaying them on my body. And I think it's been, that's been fantastic. And, you know, I do talk about embracing discomfort in a lot of different regards. I think it's incredibly important. And if you were interested, then I think that in my opinion, it's highly worth it. And you will really never know until you do the first one. And maybe it won't be for you, but uh, they are for me and I'm definitely going to keep doing them. So another thing that I thought we're really connected to today is understanding just the sheer volume of work that has to go into becoming a really good artist. And that's in general, but in particular, like the tattoo artist. Uh, I mean, ultimately to create art on somebody's skin for life, permanent. It's a pretty impressive skill, especially I, I think my fan, my artist does a fantastic job. And to think about all the work, all the hours that he's put in over the years and probably for a long time in the beginning with probably not a ton to show for it, but now being an artist that's starting to get super booked in Asheville, which I'm super pumped for him. Uh, I think it's it's just an interesting thing. It's one of the things a couple years ago I got interested in the art uh, a little bit, not a lot, but going to art museums and actually appreciating what they have to offer. I was in Amsterdam and went to the Ricks Museum and it was a fantastic experience. And putting yourself in the frame of reference of doing all that work and putting yourself in the frame of reference of that time frame in history and understanding that instead of just sitting and watching TV or instead of just sitting and doom scrolling on your phone, those weren't options. 
And so some of the options that people took were to paint or to write or to draw all these different things and like painting and just painting the scene in your home or going down to the river, uh, going down the courtyard, painting things like that. I find that incredibly fascinating. And ultimately I think about the amount of work that goes into that and really that significant outcomes and the ability to produce really quality outcomes and outputs comes on the other side of a lot of work. Like when you first start something, you should suck. Like that's the point, it's standard. That's the expectation that you should have. And it's only after we put in a ton of work and we reflect on that work and we have ways to measure it and understand if it's good or bad and, and we are improving over time and, and you just stick with it. You just keep trucking, keep working on that thing day after day, week after week, month after month and year after year. And eventually those outputs are night and day. They're just so far beyond what you do when you start and what you do maybe in the first 10 100, maybe even 1,000 reps, the gap between those is massive. But you have to do the work. I think that's incredibly powerful to understand and really conceptualize and understand. As I talked about the interrupts yesterday, I think it's a fantastic idea to understand if you want something that you got to work for it every day and when you recognize that you're not interrupting yourself and getting back to the task. So... <laughs> Additionally, I talked about this a little bit earlier in the video, but understanding that it's never too late. Uh, one of my favorite quotes ever, uh, it was on a bookmark that my, my mom gave me, and I'm not sure where that bookmark is. I Hopefully, I still have it somewhere. It's one of my favorite gifts I've ever had. I probably had it since I was 10 years old, 12 years old, something like that. And I believe it's a quote by George Eliot. I always forget, because T.S. Eliot was somebody I read in high school was forced to read in high school, but I believe it's George Eliot and it says it's never too late to become what you might have been. And it's definitely one of my top 10 quotes, just because I think people think it's too late a lot of times and it's truthfully not. Like you just have to make the choice to change and you have to maybe take, <laughs> disrupt your life, maybe significantly in order to be what you've always, what you always were supposed to be, what might have been. Uh, hopefully I didn't butcher that quote. It's been a long time since I read it or saw it, and I did not look it up for this video. I didn't really think about, I thought about it very briefly about saying it, and then I just felt like I had to. So I think that it's one of those things that I've embraced a lot of things that I've really wanted to do for a very long time, and I highly encourage you to do so because... You know, you could say YOLO, we only live once, but like that's true and we don't know when our time's gonna end. And to take the opportunities that you have in front of you and, and make some of them happen, I think that it's, it's imperative to do so because it is your life. And I think that one of the things that I love about the tattoos is that it's permanently there and I have to own them now. And there's a level of confidence that comes within that, uh, a confidence of like I had said, what's, what matters to me and what's important to me and how I determined to portray that. And as great as it is to hear people say that they like them, sometimes hearing that they don't like them is also very enjoyable for me because then I get to say that that, that doesn't matter. That it's a representation of me and, and while I appreciate the opinion, like that's theirs and they're, they have a right to it. But I also have a right to them. And it's the truest and deepest, most representation of myself. And I plan on keep going. I was thinking about taking a big break and uh, I just couldn't do it. So I do have another one scheduled at the end of May. Uh, found a Friday that he had some availability. And so it's gonna be starting to get into summer. I don't wanna do it when I'm gonna maybe be down at the pool and getting in the pool or maybe get in water in anywhere. And, uh, really just trying to get it in there before I have to do some more races too. So it's gonna be tight versus the Cincinnati race, but I think it's gonna be fine. Uh, should be pretty much fully healed up and it's not like I'm swimming in there anyways, just a dip through water. So I think ultimately everything should be good with it. 
then I probably will take a break for a couple months before I go back into it in the winter next year. So if you're thinking about it, maybe this video will help push you over the edge, maybe you connect with it. Uh, but in general, I think there's a lot of lessons there. I think there's a lot of lessons everywhere. We just gotta look for them and determine and if we wanna listen to them or not and apply them to our life. So appreciate you guys. Can't lose if you don't quit.